Hi guys, my name is Kyle from Regrettable Props, and we're here with another For Honor tutorial vi video, this time covering Kenzie's, Kenzie's helmet from the Samurai Faction of obviously For Honor, and you're going to be cutting out the templates that you currently see on screen. I'm using 10mm craft foam. Uh, you want to, I'm giving you one half for the back wraparound pieces, and all you have to do is just flip it over, because right now you have a right side, and then once you flip it over, you have the left side, and once you cut it all out, this is what you should be having so far. You want to make sure your cuts are being uh, perpendicular to the surface that you're cutting with, so it's a four, 90 degree angle on those edges of where it's cut, and then you want to slowly attach the foam for the dome up the sides, slowly at the base. If you're using contact cement, probably be best here um, and then just slowly working your way if you can I did use hot glue it's not the prettiest but what we're gonna do later is currently cover it in one millimeter craft foam I used I made a one centimeter wide strip of one two millimeter craft foam sorry not one millimeter around the base of this dome that we have made and then afterwards there's some triangle pieces that would Cover up those seams, so if you have really, if you have messy seams like I do as well, in mine, uh, no one will see them. Uh, and you need to cut out approximate. You need to cut out seven. It, it does show in the video that I cut out nine, uh, just in case of a few extras needed. As for the placement of them, obviously there's going to be four of them that will be on each of the seams, and then the other three you want to make sure they are within the middle. Of three of those sections uh, you'll be able to tell in the video portion uh, of this next coming clip I do want to apologize I am recording this first half of the video section of this helmet uh, with my iPhone since the camera I currently use is unavailable at this time now these long seven triangle sections they may be a little long at the top of the helmet but you want to make sure you connect them first along that one centimeter strip and then glue them more to all towards the top and then you may need to adjust them to make sure they are all able to meet at the top then we're going to cut out 14 quarter semicircle pieces and they're going to be going on each side of these triangle pieces like you see here you only see one on one side but obviously there's going to be another piece on the other side and they're going to be like that around the entire helmet of the pink two millimeter sections and you just want to make sure you glue them all like so and that way you have this front section that you currently see with the big gap left open for some other detailing pieces. Now we're going to cut out a circle and this is going to cover the very top piece of where all those seven triangle pieces meet at the very top of the helmet. Um, fortunately enough, I can, since it's such thin enough foam, I can use scissors to cut it. You can use a box knife depending on what you guys have available to you. As well, we're cutting out the additional extra pieces for that section of the helmet that has that gap we're going to have one middle piece cut out and then you see in our piece on the screen that says left side that's going to be going on the left side and obviously you're going to want to flip it and put it on the right side and then this is going to be the layout of it with the circle on top of covering all those pieces where they meet make sure you put that on last because you got to put on these detail pieces first to prior before because they get tucked underneath as well underneath that circle along with all the other detailing triangle pieces. Now there is a brim section piece here we're going to be cutting out of 10 millimeter foam but the piece I'm using is not entirely accurate to what is on the helmet from the uh, game art itself and I will be inputting a template which is more accurate to what should have been on the helmet as opposed to what you currently see on screen and I'm just cutting it out with a box cutter and then there's gonna be a ton of Dremel work done afterwards. Now what you see here is two rectangles, but we're gonna be cutting them out and sanding on the back. We're gonna be sanding off the texture foam and we're gonna be curving them with a heat gun to help get them, give them some shape because they are on the side of the opening of the face and they flare outwards. Do not know the proper terminology for this. There's a ton of terminology for this helmet that I do not know and probably people in the comments section which who are be better educated on it than in comparison to me will be able to answer it but these two pieces are just cut out of foam there's gonna be some detail work done with a Dremel and we're gonna be putting a two millimeter other additional p detail piece on it later 
Now we're going to be putting the markings of where we're going to be having the holes on each of the three strips that wrap around the back of the foam of the helmet. On the end pieces, there's going to be two that are really close together and then four on each of the half and then uh, a total of six areas we're going to be indicating which need to have um, holes punched through on each strip. Uh, obviously the two on the ends like I mentioned and then once you've marked out roughly in the middle of the height of each piece you're going to want to do uh, four more dots total. Two on the top, two on the bottom so it looks like a five from a side of a dice and that four pieces, the four holes are going to be the four dots are where we're going to be punching out holes with the Dremel. You don't want to be doing the center one because you that's just a help as a guide for your other additional dots for marking. But then we're just going to be using, or I used a Dremeling, tapered Dremel bit. You guys can, if you, ha if you don't have a Dremel, you can use a piece of tubing with the sharpening, sharpened end of it, roughly the size that you want a puncture out of the hole. You could use a electric drill if you so seem fit that also would work uh, make sure you uh, get the correct size drilling bit for the hole you want we don't want it too big roughly the size of a circumference of a uh, pencil or a pen give you an idea give you guys an idea just go with a pencil diameter size of that and we're just marking out here on the screen like you could see so it does look like the five on a six side piece of die and you guys just want to repeat that for all three pre all three pieces like you currently see on screen hopefully you're able to see due to it being heat sealed now it has made the foam a little bit darker darker but you can see what i've done this is the outside edge this is where it'd be this is the inside portion of where it would connect uh, against these foam pieces uh, you can see i went over Remove the texture on the back with the sanding drum bit and then there's a tapered bit which I'm going to be showing a picture now which allowed me to get these edges tapered in and then more of a roughed up texture on the foam which none of my other helmets uh, have which helped make it in my opinion a bit more realistic than it being completely smooth as well as I did the same for this little hat portion I the proper terms I'll look them up and I'll do little subtitles to indicate for which piece but I did the same thing sanding bit uh, sanding dremel bit to get rid of the texture and then in the tapered bit to get this um, try and get the focus more of a more like a, a rim or a trim brim on the edge and then I use that same tapered bit to go over the texture of the black and then heat sealed it. That way it's not as uh, bumpy or indented by helps had a bit more texture like I said as opposed to the smooth texture which doesn't seem as realistic. Uh, sanding bit to add in more some blade marks and some indentations. I use the heat gun in a few places you can kind of tell where it's darker. Um, to kind of burn the foam to give it more of a, once again, different texture. Um, and then just continued that Dremel, the tapered Dremel bit through the entire helmet. And the best way to describe it was I used it mainly on its side around a 45 degree angle. And I essentially just doodled would be the best way to describe it if you're doodling to fill in any, uh, like on a piece of paper with your pencil or pen and I just worked my way up doodling essentially in that type of motion all the way until these side pieces were completely covered with that texture and you can see I did it all the way through um, maybe hard to tell but I did um, bevel these edges slightly to give them a little bit rounded but it may be a little hard to see um, you guys can completely do this part up to whatever you're available to do yourself. I just thought um, having have a more hammered or non-smooth finish would give it a better final appearance. So anyways, I used that same uh, 
tapered bit to punch punch these holes in um, because it looks like on the uh, the the reference reference pictures I have is that they have them laced through here are some pieces of rope then there's like um a dangly clump of thread that's thread, th um, frayed at the bottom hanging all along the bottom of this but anyways i'm going to be moving on to the next part of the build forgot to mention remove the textures off this side with the sanding bit and then on with the sanding bit i very lightly scuffed up the surface of these pieces that go along the back of the helmet um, just to give it a little bit more fidelity or texture to it um, as opposed to having that smooth foam finish. So with all those pieces that we have that were free before um, this weird shaped piece just got glued on the front between here and here, if you can see. Um, just got hot glued along the back. These pieces that wrap around the back, it got started about there on that side, that one quarter semicircle. And same with that quarter semicircle. And then it's just hot glued around the top, and then each layer just follows that same pattern, meeting up with the ends, and then if able to have it slightly offset so each piece um, going down is out a little bit farther than the one before. So this one would be in deeper, this one would be out, and in comparison to these two, this one would be in deeper and this one would just be overhanging just slightly, if that makes sense. These curved pieces are attached just with hot glue on the sides, making sure not to cover up those holes. And then, yeah, that's that's about it so far with the pieces that we have made. Um, there's a spike piece that goes up here that I need to figure out how to pattern out of foam. And there's like some little circle pieces here, here, there, and there that could probably, since they're so thin, I could probably get away with just using cardstock and then having it match the rest of the paint, but that won't be put on until um, we come to painting after sealing. So, back on to the next part. Now we have an additional 2mm craft foam pieces which are going on the pieces that flare out at the front. They're just circles with what looks to be like a flower floral design engraved into them. But I'm just using the 2mm foam and then I'm going to be roughly making three different flowers poorly done based off this one picture. And then I'm just using uh, the a uh, knife. An exacto blade to score the tip because essentially we're just gonna be like I mentioned scoring the outlines and then using a heat gun to help open up the foam to give that design um, the ability for you to actually be able to see it because the heat helps open up those cut lines that we did with just the scoring and then once again they're gonna be attached to roughly the center of each piece that flares out that you saw moments ago now for the spike piece we're gonna cut out four pieces uh, four triangles and we're gonna glue them all together to make like a pyramid. I slowly started from the base of the pyramid filling it up with hot glue to give it a bit more rigidity and let it cool a little bit then add a bit more and cool a bit and add a bit more and then I put the pyramid on a piece of foam trace the outline for the square bottom and then I just glue that on depending on how it, there is no template on that square piece but depending on how you guys align that four pieces to make your pyramid um, may have some slight adjustment needed so that's why you guys can just trace the outline of it and then glue it and attach it to the bottom like such and then we just took a small connects gray bit uh, like one of the washers and just attached it at the bottom of the pyramid to the top of the helmet 
you guys can use a small piece of tubing if you have it but that's how I did it and I had the point meet with that center piece of detail that goes out the front once we have all these pieces attached we're going to coat the entire helmet on the outside and a little bit of the inside uh, two to three coats of Mod Podge at least two for sure give the entire helmet a base coat of black and then we're going to be taking the silver and black and mixing it to make a darker metallic paint and we're just going to be painting only the areas that you currently see the black areas are obviously going to be left uh, and painted gold and there's going to be some other additional areas that are painted gold I do apologize for the layout of how this is currently filmed in I thought from my phone it'd be different but you can see I'm just mixing a black and brown in those crevices I do this over the entire helmet and take a wet towel or paper towel I have a spare towel that I use for wiping away the paint and then it helps give weathering to the entire entire helmet and then I'm taking a sponge and mixing some different types of paints and look and metallics and browns and blacks on the entire helmet and just doing it on that back section now for this back de bleh, detail we are threading it with webbing um, or twine. What am I? Why did I say webbing? Um, and I am doing uh, quad threaded. So um, take your twine, and then you uh, want to fold it in half, and then once again fold it in half again. And you go want to start in one of these corners and go from there to there, and then have it from behind loop from over here across or. From over here and across that way they all look like this and then afterwards you just cut the excess and then glue them down with hot glue after you have everything all these quad threaded through this is what it should look like on the outside of the helmet and then afterwards once you glue it and cut away the excess this is what it looks like on the inside and this way you don't have to worry about this coming out at all that's a loose one I gotta fix it but anyways you understand the point <laughs> make sure each one's glued um, for where you have the threads coming through because this is where it tucks in from behind for example this one is this one so make sure you do that whole process for all that and we'll move on to the next part.